last video, we decided that a good starting point for understanding our world is to understand motion, or how the position of an object can change through time. Let's see if we can use our experiences to come up with a few simple rules about motion. The simplest thing we can say about motion is that if something isn't moving, it won't start moving if it is left alone. There are probably many things around you right now that are following this rule. We can also extend this idea a little bit and say that if something is moving, it will keep moving with the same speed and direction if it is left alone. This isn't quite as obvious because we see that things do tend to come to a halt on their own, but this is because of friction. If we somehow reduce friction enough, we start to see that an object's speed doesn't change on its own. This is known as the principle of inertia, or Newton's first law of motion. Now that we've figured out what happens when an object is left alone, we can think about what happens when an object isn't left alone. Say I have a rock sitting on the ground. If I push on it, it starts moving. That's a start, but since we're trying to gain understanding, let's try to be more precise. By starts moving, I mean the speed changes from zero to some other number, and we use the word acceleration to describe changes in speed. Also, another word for push is force. So a more physics-y way of saying, the rock starts moving when I push on it, is, the rock accelerates when I apply a force. We also know from our experience, that if we want the rock to accelerate twice as much, we need to apply twice the force. If we want to write this down mathematically, we say that the force is directly proportional to the acceleration. But there's something missing from this relationship. We couldn't say that the force was equal to the acceleration, because the mass of the object also matters. If I have another rock that has twice the mass of my original rock, I need to apply twice the force to get the same acceleration. Mathematically, this means that the force needed to accelerate an object is directly proportional to the mass of the object. Another way to look at it is if I apply the same force to a rock with twice the mass, the rock will only accelerate half as much. Mathematically, this means that with a given force, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. We can combine these three statements into one equation, force equals mass times acceleration. This is known as Newton's second law of motion. This thing is kind of a big deal because it means we can predict the motion of any object as long as we know what the forces are. Even in really complicated situations like the solar system, we know that all the pieces are just following this simple rule. So in principle, we can solve any problem in mechanics.